Tenemos este que nos ha funcionado mucho, que es el Chapo Bros. He's become famous because of the music, because of the culture, because mm -hmm. everyone talks good about him. He's the modern Robin Hood. We don't see him as someone bad. Mexico's government was pretty proud of itself the day that the drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman was recaptured just six months after his crazy tunnel escape. A day later, the story took another bizarre turn. Rolling Stone published an interview El Chapo gave to actor Sean Penn back in October. Lots of attention went to the scandal that ensued, while many immediately became obsessed with El Chapo's fashion choices. There's a certain market phenomenon that happens every time one of these drug lords is caught or captured. Whatever attire or gear they are wearing becomes an instant sales hit on both sides of the border. In 2010, after Edgar Villarreal uh, was caught in Mexico, his pine green Narco Polo became an instant hit in Mexico and here in the US. Well, right now we're here in the fashion district of downtown Los Angeles. And behind me is a shop called Barabas. They are the makers of the two shirts that Joaquin El Chapo Guzman was seen wearing in the photographs that were published by Rolling Stone during his meeting with actor Sean Penn. So these are the two styles These right are here. the two famous shirts right Okay, now. and what are they called? This is a fantasy and this is a crazy paisley. And I imagine you got a lot more orders for these two styles. Yes, and hundreds from all around the world. We have Germany customers, we have friends, everywhere in Latino, Mexico, Israel. I received a couple emails from Dubai. You know, questions have been raised about, you know, is this the glorification of sort of like the narco business? What is your response or your reaction to that? And no, as a business, we are, we are a fashion designer. We are not. We are not affiliated with anybody. As our label said, good word, good thoughts, and good deeds. Mm. That's why we just announced that we're gonna do five percent of our profit to the Deer Corporation mm -hmm. for the child drug abuse. That's drug abuse resistance for education, the, right? Yes, there. For the there. It was a nice idea, but Dare later said on their website that they would have rejected any such offer. It's beautiful. Well, as you can see, Barabas wasn't a brand that just became instantly popular with the Mexican banda Norteño singers. Many of these artists are super well known and are huge sellers here in the United States and Mexico. You have Espinosa Paz, here you have El Commander, um, a couple of other guys, Giovanni. I don't know him. Ah, from Van der Recolo. Okay, gotcha. We're kind of looking at a chicken or egg scenario here. Who wore this style of dress first? The drug lords or the musicians who sometimes sing about them? What's certain is that the Mexican regional music scene, also known as banda or norteño, is a hugely profitable genre that has had a huge impact on the country's popular culture. <laughs> Many of its most famous artists are from the state of Sinaloa or have roots there. But that's also the home of the Sinaloa cartel, El Chapo's drug empire, which has inspired the growth of the narco corrido genre, tales told in song of drug lords and their exploits. <laughs> Sinaloa culture at large is spreading in influence. Sinaloa fashion, slang, even foods are becoming more popular in the U.S. Relatives of El Chapo have even attempted to register his name and nickname as a trademark in Mexico. Los Angeles has played a pivotal role in the development of corrido culture, with popular clubs serving as venues for musicians who pioneered the narco corrido genre. To learn more, I'm meeting with Sam Quinones, an author who's written extensively about this scene. Sam, you're one of the earliest chroniclers of corrido culture here in Southern California. Where are we now? What is this spot that is behind us here? We are in the beautiful town of Southgate, California. Much of this area was filled with uh, large factories. Uh, when those left, all the residents were white, also left, and in their place came a huge numbers of Mexican immigrants. And this area became kind of like a little Mexico. In this place across the street here was a famous, some say infamous, club called El Parral. This was kind of a center of the narcocultura that really began to develop with the corridos of Chalino Sanchez, and then, of course, the intensification of drug trafficking from Mexico to the United States. The club became a kind of a nucleus of 
gang life, narco life. And city of Southgate hated this club. It was constant police calls. And uh, a few years ago, the Los Angeles Unified School District took the property through eminent domain and built uh, Willow Elementary School. Over the years, some narco corrido singers have been shot or killed in Mexico, a sign of how the lines can blur between the drug traffickers and their corrido storytellers. On this side of the border, while corrido nightlife still exists, incidents of violence and crime have caused the scene to subside. We're in the city of Pico Rivera here in LA, and this is the site of what used to be the most popping club to hear this kind of music. Well, it turns out this spot, El Rodeo, has been shut down. And now it's been empty for more than a year as its former owner uh, faces very serious charges related to methamphetamine trafficking and to money laundering. Wow, they really just pick, picked up and took off. Some old cash register there, some glasses. It's not only the club scene that's changing, the music itself evolved with the rise of the Movimiento Alterado, or the Altered Movement, a style of hyper-violent narco corridos. The Corrido was this true newspaper of the Mexican working class. Now what the Corrido has become is more, it's gone from being a newspaper to being advertising, to being propaganda. Uh, it told the stories of, of, of uh, Rancho Mexico for many years beautifully, and now what it does is praise the most wealthy, the most bloodthirsty, the most powerful, uh, the ones with the most big warehouses of money. The songs are all about chopping off heads and shooting, kidnapping people, and, and it's almost pornographic. To me, that's a sad thing. When you think about the violence of the drug war, in Mexico, you imagine uh, the destruction of people's lives and the instability brought by the lack of rule of law. From 2008 to 2012, Guzman's Sinaloa cartel fought for control of Ciudad Juarez against the Juarez cartel in a war that resulted in at least 10,000 deaths. Well, those images don't compute with the image of this uh, unmarked, nondescript uh, storefront here on Burbank Boulevard in Burbank, California. Behind these walls is the home of Twins Enterprises. It's their recording studio. And really, you could say that the soundtrack of the drug war is produced and recorded right here. There was a newspaper in Mexico, El Universal, mm -hmm. who said that our company was funded by El Chapo Guzman. <laughs> and when I read that, I was like, wow, as big they see it as something big, you know? <laughs> Adolfo Valenzuela and his twin brother Omar grew up in Southern California, but remained close to Sinaloa, where their father was a musician who played before narco lords. The brothers started making music when they were 15, playing at Norteño-style clubs in Southern California before starting their label, Twins, which was a driving force in the development of the Movimiento Alterado. Lo más básico es de que todo mundo dice, oye, ¿por qué promueves la violencia? Entonces yo, yo siempre lo tengo muy claro que, pues, que la violencia, la música no tiene na nada que ver con la violencia. La, la, musica, la violencia va a seguir sin esta música y, va, y ha estado desde antes, ¿no? Entonces, eh, esta música simplemente es una realidad que los jóvenes querían expresar o quieren expresar lo que está pasando a su alrededor mm -hmm. y, lo tienen que poner, y lo tienen que poner en música. It's a lifestyle of wanting good things in life, you know. For a long time, Mexicans, we have been uh, taught that, you know, debemos ser humilitos y no pedir más y agachar la cabeza. So in this case, you know, we, we can dream high. We can dream of having, you know, luxuries. We can dream of becoming big entrepreneurs or anything we want. In true entrepreneurial spirit, Twins released a new line of Chapo-themed T-shirts almost immediately after his recapture. Tenemos este que nos ha funcionado mucho, que es el Chapo Bros. Próximamente la tercera fuga. Okay. Ya no hay, no hay Chapo que no sea bravo. Right. Este también lo hemos vendido mucho. 
Y tenemos esta que, que es como una frase eh, como de superación o posi positiva donde te menciona que siempre existe una salida. And shirts aren't the only way the Valenzuela brothers are capitalizing on the celebration of criminal masterminds like El Chapo. They also owned a narco-themed taco shop called Tacos Los Desvelados. When you think about it, American popular culture has always been enamored with that untouchable gangster figure from Al Capone to freeway Ricky Ross. And arguably, in our day, that figure is Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. So as you can see, some of the items up there are El Chapito Guzman, Burrito Pablo Escobar, and I think I'm going to have the Taco Al Capone. The Taco Al Capone? Uh, you know, if you want to think about this in historical terms, we've done a complete circle in this country from one period of prohibition to another, and I have it literally on my plate, having a taco named after Al Capone in a taco shop dedicated to the lore of Chapo Guzman. With this taco, <laughs> we complete the circle.